what are your skills in sales? Like, what are you good at uh, when it comes to like, you know, getting more customers and in, in, into Universal? Like, what what is your approach? Yeah. Well, you know, I'd love to say that that I'm the kind of guy that I can go super cold, like on a cold call and, and close somebody. Uh, I think I could, but what I'm really, I think what I'm decent or better at is, is like what we talked earlier, like the, the being obsessed with that customer service that you kind of like the word of mouth. Okay. Hey, this guy's really good because of that, this and that. Uh, and then boom, like they give you a shot. Uh, so I think that has been our number one sales strategy. You know, it's, it, it hasn't been more, it hasn't been the whole cold calling, the LinkedIn messages, the emails, uh, it's been more of a, you know, recommendation type. Um, uh -huh. And I think I, and I think I'm good at that. Like if if I if I get an opening saying you know hey this guy did this for me check him out. I mean I feel like I can definitely close it just because I'm going to tell you the facts of what we do. Um, but also you know I think I think uh, I'm an honest guy and 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 the fact that I let him know that I'm always available uh, intrigues people because you know people are like okay everybody says that but are, are you really always in and and you know I make sure they understand that this is my life and. And, you know, I, I just, you know, so, I, I can't live without it. I'm a, I'm a workaholic. So, you know, so I, it, I, think, I think people kind of like that with their freight. <laughs> hey, what's going on? Perfect. Man? Happy Friday. What's Merry going Christmas. on? Happy Friday to you. Yeah, man. It's almost almost here. Uh trying to trying to finish the month. You know what? Can you hear me all right? Because I can only hear you with one headphone. I don't know what the I, other one is. I, I like. could hear you. I know it happens sometimes with the AirPods. It does that. Yeah. It's really weird. It's, I don't know what it is, man. So, I know I, let me, it uh, happens. It, it does happen sometimes. But yeah, I could hear you perfectly. I wonder if I should um if I should just do because I don't want it to mess up with your you know, whenever you edit it or anything like that. It's not messing up at all. Okay. It's so it sounds all right. Yeah, we're good. We're good. No. Perfect. How's the, Perfect. how's the holiday uh, week been for uh, logistics? Bro. Ooh, it's, it's been something, man. I mean, it was already busy as it, as it was right. Um, already intense, but then yeah. you added the, this, the storm and, you know, it was almost like, okay, you know, I, <laughs> that's just logistics for you. It, it's <laughs> one thing after another that you have to battle, so to speak. And uh, sure. I mean, it's, that's that's what we do, right? It's it's, it's, it's part of the fun. But uh, I mean, it's great. I mean, we we had a goal for the month, so to speak. And, you know, as of last week, we we're pretty behind, you know, because things were slowing down. We're very into the automotive world. And uh, in this week, we just boom, like. It's like everybody got into it and, and and we're hitting it. So congrats on that. That's good to hear. Uh yeah. How's, man. how's the weather in Birmingham, Alabama? Have you been Birmingham's not bad, man? Uh, it's it's not. It, it's we haven't really been affected at all. Um very what's windy. temperature like. Let me check what it's like right now, man. I'll have to uh let me see. Did it get below I zero? Got 30, uh, 12, 12 degrees right now. Twelve degrees. 12 degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. wow. Have you ever experienced that cold weather in uh, Birmingham, Alabama? We have, man. Uh, there's been a couple of instances where we had the, uh, you know, the, there was one called the snow apocalypse uh, yeah. here in Birmingham because, you know, people are not used to that. They're not, like, the infrastructure of Birmingham does not support weather like this at all. So, sure. you know... I mean, people had to leave their cars on the side of the road and walk to whatever they, they needed to go. I remember the company I used to work for, I think this was 2013 or so. And I had to like sleep under my desk because I couldn't get home. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, wow. It was, yeah, I, it was intense, man. Uh, but Everything uh, is shut down. It, it shuts down completely. I mean, you just have no infrastructure. And uh, luckily, th this is not happening this this time. I mean, but it's not over. I mean, I think that that time it was around February, so it uh, yeah. it could uh, it could very well happen again. Uh, but you know, the yeah. oldest areas right now, like Missouri, Indiana, Kentucky, 
they're all slammed, you know, yeah, obviously yeah. Michigan, Illinois. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know if you saw the post, you know, some of the drivers were sending and it's just insane. Man. Yeah, I, mean, I just have a text message now from uh, from Lindsay Intermodal showing me like yeah. uh, the, the driver picking up a container, you know, in Chicago. In Chicago, it's minus, uh, well, this was in Celsius. It was like minus 22 with, uh, but if, with the wind chill, it felt like minus 36. <laughs> and I'm like, Dude, uh, it's insane. So. This, yeah, this were insane. And, and you know, I, I remember a couple of years ago, we had an issue like that in Illinois, where you know we went to we went to pick up, and like the the the, the doors of the of the docks weren't opening at all because they were shut yeah. with you know frozen. So yeah. we're we're used to it. I mean, it's it's one of those things you kind of just forget about it, and you're so in the rhythm that one I don't know where it hits you. In, the face is like okay we're back here again sure um, sure with this time of the year so but I, are you still doing some brokering or or, or is it just right there I don't, well you're wait i just i'm on your profile right now on uh, linkedin are you you're an ato yeah yeah i'm an ato too <laughs> no shit really <laughs> oh wow <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that's, that's what, incredible you know what you want to say something oh. uh, this is I actually had my uh my paddle here do, do, do you guys do paddles I don't um I, uh, I I don't have one but my yeah, cousin does. Was, yeah. Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. That's wow, funny that's, as hell, dude. That, yeah, that's from, that's a small world. It is a small world. I'm a, I'm from uh, U of I uh in uh, Urbana Champaign. That's, uh, that's oh, crazy. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, so was, mine is a small school uh University of Montevallo Division 2. Um, okay. but but yeah, so cool. uh yeah, it, it was a great time. I, I really For enjoyed sure. it. That's awesome. <laughs> What, yeah, what year did you graduate college? Uh, 2015. Okay. Because you're a little bit younger, but yeah. dude, that's awesome. <laughs> what a small world. Um, wow. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Have you uh, have you been to the, uh, the headquarters in Indianapolis? I guess you, I since have you guys are very close. No. Okay. I, uh, I've never been, but uh, I've driven by like, you know, and I've seen the sign. Sure. Of it. Yeah. So, I had a pretty interesting experience with, with, um, with like the fraternity of with ATO because so like I I transferred from a community college to U of I uh, this is my second yeah. semester uh, sophomore year and my cousin was already in ATO uh, he was my age but he came as a freshman and I, I literally get there and he's like Paul uh, you're coming into ATO like no matter what like I'm bringing you in and yeah, yeah. this was like in the middle of like an investigation by the university for hazing and it was <laughs> like Jeez. it was really like in terms of like, I was in like a half class, so I was like the I was a half class uh, second semester, and literally like there was like rumors going on that we're about to like the the university is about to like throw us off campus. We're we're never we're yeah. not gonna exist and all this stuff. And so like I had uh yeah like my pledge my pledging was a lot different than everyone else's, and it was a six person class. So we had a really small group of people, uh, but I ended up just like um, I ended up living there for two years both my junior and senior year um, and I just got close with like my, all of my cousins, like uh, class. And then with my six friends, uh, we, we like my six brothers. So uh, yeah, yeah. I had a d little different experience than compared to my cousin. My cousin, you know, went through the whole, whole like, uh, like the actual like fraternity experience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Russian, I, mean, I, I lived yeah. there for two years. It was crazy. <laughs> it was, it was insane. And actually I got the job as a freight broker because um well, like our one of our brothers, he his dad owned a freight brokerage, and he was like, "Paul, like I'll get you a job." Uh, and so I became that, a freight that's so cool, a, dude. Yeah, so that's how I became a carrier sales rep. Um, so that's it's kind of funny. That, so it's it's that, that is a that, that that is a small world. We uh, well, my experience obviously being in a small school, we were in a huge fraternity, and we didn't have that many members really. Um, but you know, it was me and a, and a few friends that were in the soccer team. And we're all like, but dude, let's just start our own. And then we're like, ah, this sounds kind of complicated. You know, it's, it's a lot. And and ATO had some athletes in the in the, uh, in the fraternity, so you know they, they recruited us hard. And it was we're all like a yeah. like a package deal. We're all coming in. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, so that but I mean, dude, we, we had a great time. Um, and you know, for for what it's worth, I think I had the full experience, even though it was a small school, like. I couldn't imagine sure. doing it at like University of Alabama with like hundreds of people in it, you know. And yeah, yeah. Th that's I, right. Uh, we used to go to the to Alabama to to hang out with the ATOs and you okay. know they had mansions. 
Yeah, yeah, we had a mansion too. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, yeah, we had a we had a beautiful home. Uh, it's still there. I was actually driving by uh, in July, in August, and I stopped by, and it's all there, and everything. Everything's intact. That's awesome. Yeah, it's like a historical building. It's been there for a long time. So uh, really, yeah, it's, it's it's definitely cool. And uh, yeah, that's one thing I, I kind of wish. You know, our house was all right, but you know, like then then you see the big universities, and it's like, oh my god. Sure. <laughs> I, I don't know how people actually make it through school with this like. Places. I I honestly was so happy when when I left. <laughs> I was, in the sense of like it was a good experience at a great time, but I'm like I'm so ready for yeah. a new. Like I was like I'm gonna go work and I'm gonna be like a regular human being. Uh, you know. Yeah, it's, it's a lot, man. Yeah, definitely. So, Carlos, I'm on your LinkedIn profile here, and it's it says that you talk about kaizen. Is kaizen some Japanese? Uh, something Japanese. Exactly. It's uh, it's like continuous improvement, uh, okay. and it's and it, it was developed by Japanese companies, automakers. Uh, that basically, That's right. yeah, 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 yeah. So it's uh, and we try to, you know, again, as as we deal in the other world, we try to make sure that we're bringing that in because my my pitch, you know, to whoever we're you know we're we're trying to do business with or we're doing business with is, you know, we're we're kind of like we want to imitate our customers. In a sense of, okay, if if this is what's valuable to you, I'm gonna make it valuable to me, uh, and and make it my goals and make it my 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 deal to to be like that. And continuous improvement is one of them. For obviously, you know, we work with automakers here. I mean, we're in Alabama. We have Toyota. We have Honda down the road. So you know, it, it was one of those things that I feel like by imitating that, it just makes us more you know, together with the, with the customer, like, totally. so, I mean, it, it, and it's been, and it's been successful, I think with, with our team to understand not every customer is going to be the same. And you know that like some customers like text messages, some, some customers hate it, you know, and, and they just want a phone call. So to, to mold to those guys, I think that's, uh, that was something that we, we have done and, you know, and that's super important to, to the Japanese culture uh, sure. in, in terms of logistics. Yeah, that's smart. I like that. I have actually uh, listened to a lot of audiobooks like a month ago about like uh, yeah, like the Japanese way of like business and like I, and the, there's part of it mentioned kaizen and I know I know there's a book like on like like something about Toyota like the Toyota way. I forgot what it's called exactly. Uh, have you read yeah. that book? I haven't, uh, but but I've heard of it. I've heard yeah. of it. Okay. I, yeah, it's super interesting, man. Uh, the the whole like uh, I don't have. I know this is kind of off subject, but I don't know if you watched the uh, the documentary on Carlos Goshen. Carlos uh, Goshen? No, I haven't. He, he was the CEO of a Nissan. But oh, the one that escaped? Was, the one that like the, the one that the escaped? Country? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. that on Netflix? Where's that at? I gotta watch that. Man, I actually watched it on the flight. Um, okay, so oh, I'm gonna it, Google it after this. Uh, I'm gonna watch check it. Check it out, dude. It, it's interesting. It's very interesting, and uh, it, and it was kind of it was because again the Japanese culture is, is so one way right and, sure. and and what this documentary pitches it was it was very difficult because they brought renault into a uh into the partnership with nissan and it kind of sure. didn't go very great okay. uh, so I, I don't know why i brought that up i guess the whole japanese thing but uh well, but the I, partnership I think didn't very... go well so there was no kaizen i guess from renault, renault. It, it, exactly it, yeah. it was it was weird man and uh but if you watch it i i, I enjoyed it just because again been in automotive and I didn't know much about the story, but obviously that's just the way he, he pitches. I, I don't know whether his story is a true story or not, but it's very interesting to to just see a different perspective right. from what like the media showed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I gotta watch I love those I love those kind of documentaries, especially like when it's like with business and a scandal. Like I'm watching it. Like right now I'm watching yeah. uh, I mean, it's not a documentary, it's 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 uh but it's about Theranos. I'm not sure if you've heard of Theranos like that company uh healthcare company from california that raised like a okay. billion dollars and it was a fraud uh it was like elizabeth holmes she, she's, she's got sentenced to jail a month ago for like 12 years and they made a like on, on hulu and disney plus they made um like a, a, a tv show about her uh super cool fascinating because right. it shows they're like raising money and lying to investors and like they got into walgreens they got into like these places and they were it was just complete fraud, and I, I love it. I'm I'm finishing it up right now. Uh, well, so. yeah, it, it, you learn so much. Uh, there's a series um, in uh, I think HBO, and it's about 
it, it is a bunch of like it's it's maybe like eight or or nine episodes. But what is I think it's called American Greed. No, no, it's not American Greed. I'm trying to think about it, but it's all the episodes are about people who've like had scandals like that and yeah. have kind of gotten away with it. Like some yeah. some kid at a fraternity at a University of Georgia being like the the wolf of whatever, and uh, and you know like it, it scandals all over the place. And it's like, how do people sure. get away with these things? It's, sure. it's it, it is yeah. fascinating. I mean, in a weird way. <laughs> totally. I mean, it, it, it's fascinating because like even in logistics, we're dealing with so much, so many shady players in this industry, uh, double brokerages and people oh, defrauding man. each other. Oh, you know. It's that's that's the crazy part about this industry. And like, I don't know, like, I, I feel like obviously there's different industries that have shadiness of their their own kind, which you, like we're not uh, accustomed to because we're not in that industry. But I wonder, like, right. like, I don't think there's that much shadiness as like as logistics on average in other industries. I, I think it's definitely- well, it is weird because you I mean, there are patterns and even though there are patterns, you know, like we train our people to stay away from it. Every once in a while, man, they'll get you, and 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 it's one of those, you know, here we go again. I mean, it's good to have the experience; you already know kind of what to do. But uh, yeah, I mean, there there are times that are just like, man, you're kind of just like, all right, I, I think I've done everything I, I can at this point. It's just yeah. a matter of, but ah, man, it, it does it does happen, and it, and it, I think it happens more in our industry than potentially any anywhere else. I mean, and just because also. Our industry has so many people outside of the country, uh, yeah. you know. So you're bringing more players even in, into the uh, into the whole sure. equation. Because all you need is a phone and an internet connection with a laptop, yeah. and you could do anything. So, like, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm in Poland. I was in Ukraine, and like we weren't doing like that kind of shady stuff. But it's definitely uh, definitely a problem in the industry. And uh, yeah, uh, and I mean, dude, I, I love the people of Armenia, right? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. but it's like it's funny like what, watching you go out there and, and seeing you know i mean they're passionate about it and uh, yeah. you know some people are great i mean it, it just sucks because sometimes you know people give a bad rap certain people give a bad rap to sure to you know whoever you're tied to or whatever organization you you represent or whatever so totally but yeah it's it's interesting uh yeah it does happen a lot it does happen yeah. a lot that's true. Um, I see, Carlos. You're also you're on the what the truck. You're alive in between Dooner and the dude. When was this? Dude, it, so this was a, a few months ago this year. Because um, I was, I was, I did the same thing in in August. Yeah, I think I was there probably like a month before you. Um, okay, and cool. uh, dude, it, it's funny because uh, I mean, you're you're a tall guy. I, I felt like a midget with those guys. I mean, you know, the, I, I was. I was trying to like prop up and uh, their, their chairs are so high. It was, it, the studio is so cool. Like I was like, dude, I'm, yeah. I'm getting a little nervous here. Uh, this, this is real. Uh, <laughs> but no, it, it, was, it was a good time. I love those guys. Uh, I got them. Uh, uh, I don't know if you've seen the cowbell that is in, in, in the front. Sure, sure. That, that, I, I got them the, the battle bell, what, what it's called. I figured it would be cool because they used to ring a bell. I was like, dude, yeah. these guys need a, a brand new battle bell. And uh <laughs> And they're getting up for him. So, you know, they, they, it, it was a fun time. I mean, you know, I, I listened to their podcast, watch their, you know, their videos and everything. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a- um, unfortunately, the dude is not no longer with, with what the truck. Um, the dude left. Or he got, I, I think Where did he got, leave? He, he got fired, I think. Well, they like, um, Freight Waves like let go of a bunch of people like a few weeks ago. No way. Yeah, yeah. So it's just it's just uh doing it right now. Dude, that's crazy. I had no idea. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, we've been slammed this month, so I mean, I've been out of it. But sure, yeah. A couple of weeks ago, like Dooner had an episode where he was like almost in tears because he was so sad uh, that the dude like there he was let go. Um, and there's a few other people that got let go too. Like I think uh, Kevin Hill is no longer at, at Freight Waves. Uh, like really, he, he's no longer on. I think payroll. I think he still does the podcast, but like he doesn't like get he doesn't have the position that he held. He doesn't have the pod like because like I was writing articles for Freight Waves and back to truckup.com and like until January 3rd, we have an agreement. And then like they like let me go to like I could they told me I could write articles, but they can't pay me for them anymore. Um so it's mm. it's uh something changed up. I mean, obviously we know the market's been kind of down. Uh, I know that they have less uh companies sponsoring their content. 
because of like the whole, you know. Yeah, situation. people have less money to, to spend. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, but, yeah, it's, it's nuts, man. Because I mean, I've seen a lot of uh, logistics companies letting people go. You know, I don't yeah. know, CH, CH Robinson, you CH know, Robinson, let go yeah. of, of a lot of people. Um, and dude, yeah, it, it makes you thankful, right? When, when, when you're in a company that can, you know, that can generate enough to keep you around. I mean, it's, but that, but that's the thing, man, like, you know, in, in logistics and sales, like, it's like, for me, it's an everyday thing. Like you can't ever just rest easy in this yeah. industry. I feel like, you know, just because, I mean, you're just one mess up away from people saying, I'm going to give somebody else a shot. Uh, so I take it very, I mean, my family sometimes thinks I'm like too into it, you know, sure. like, Hey, delegate a little bit more, but man, it's paranoid, hard to, it's hard. which is I mean, yeah, it's good. I, it's true. Yeah, 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 it's true. Yeah, It's why customers want to come back to you. And, you know, I was, it was actually funny. I was talking to like the guy that cuts my hair, like this uh, barber guy. And he was telling me like how, like, he's always worried because he's a young guy. He's like 20 years old and he's always worried about, um, you know, like when he's cutting someone's hair, he wants it to be perfect because he wants that person to come back and he like stresses out about it. He goes and like takes, he's like taking lessons now to become a better barber and all that stuff. And he's really good. Like, and yeah, uh, you know, I was like thinking like, you know, I'm, I'm the same way with my customers. Cause it's like, well, like if I'm not paranoid, then I'm going to lose them, you know? And it's yeah. like, and yeah. that's how you, that's how you improve yourself too. Right. Cause like he's taking 100% be better. He's making sure the details are, are there uh so like especially in this competitive environment of being a freight broker you're uh you know constantly uh having to prove yourself because if if, if you don't do that someone else will so and there's somebody knocking on the door every single day and yeah. that's uh so it's a concept i got from so my mom is a doctor in, in mexico okay and uh and you know but she she's in the private field so not a like at a hospital or anything like that sure. and uh you know but Basically, the, the whole thing was, and I heard it over, you know, 15, 16 years before I left home. It was like, if I if I don't answer, because she never took a vacation day, and she was like, if I don't answer, they'll call somebody else. And that and that and that's kind of it, it stayed with me, you know. They'll call somebody else. I mean, somebody else will move the load if you don't know. Yeah. And the whole thing yeah. is, I mean, if we have to lose money sometimes, whatever. But nobody else is getting called. That's my that's yeah. my goal. Yeah. You know? <laughs> totally. Got to stay paranoid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so tell us, you've been a universal logistics services for almost eight years now. Uh, you're currently the director of business development and account and account manager. <clears throat> um, so you're in logistics for that long. Uh, have you always been a customer sales rep? Uh, so man, when, when, when I got into universal, you know, we, we were obviously much smaller, uh, so I, I, I was just doing it all. I mean, whatever, whatever it took, sure. you know, like I feel like the whole customer and, and carrier sales were, were, you know, they're all in one. It wasn't like separated at all. So, sure. you know, pretty much doing the, the entire thing until recently that our team continued to grow that we've been more like, okay, you know, we got more people that can do this. People can, they yeah. can do that, they track and trace. Uh, but I mean, you know, for a long time, it was, you know, you knew everything you did everything. Like, I mean, there's, there's exactly like two different types of uh, brokerages, the ones that are cradle to the grave where you do everything. And then there's uh, the assembly line approach, which I've only worked in a, like the, I guess the assembly line approach where you have different fields, track and trace, customer sales, carrier sales. That's what people call like the Chicago freight brokerage model. And since I'm from Chicago, yeah. that's the only model I ever knew uh, for the most part. Like, I mean, I've, I've, I've been exposed to the cradle to the grave. I've also had my own brokerage for a few months. So I, I had to do it all myself anyway. Yeah. But, uh, so you, when you picked up, you probably picked up a lot of stuff um, that way. And in terms of sales, um, you know, we, we spoke, we, we spoke about someone that was great at sales earlier. Like, well, what are you, uh, I don't know, like, like, what are your skills in sales? Like, what are you good at? Uh, when it comes to like, you know, getting more customers and in, in, into Universal, like what what is your approach? Yeah. Well, you know, I'd love to say that that I'm the kind of guy that I can go super cold, like on a cold call and, and close somebody. Uh, I think I could, but what I'm really, I think what I'm decent or better at is, is like what we talked earlier, like the, the being obsessed with that customer service that you kind of like the word of mouth 
okay, hey, this guy's really good because of that, this and that. Uh, and then boom, like they give you a shot. Uh, so I think that has been our number one sales strategy. You know, it's, it, it hasn't been more, it hasn't been the whole cold calling, the LinkedIn messages, the emails. Uh, it's been more of a, you know, recommendation type. Um, uh -huh. And I think I, and I think I'm good at that. Like if if I if I get an opening saying you know hey this guy did this for me check him out. I mean I feel like I can definitely close it just because I'm going to tell you the facts of what we do. Um, but also you know I think I think uh, I'm an honest guy and 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 the fact that I let him know that I'm always available uh, intrigues people because you know people are like okay everybody says that but are, are you really always in and and you know I make sure they understand that this is my life and. And, you know, I, I just, you know, so, I, I can't live without it. I'm a, I'm a workaholic. So, you know, so I, it, think, I think people kind of like that with their freight. <laughs> sure. I mean, I, I I would definitely appreciate that and respect that. But I'm curious. So, like, let's say, Carlos, you're sleeping. It's 2 a.m. and a customer calls you. Like, is your phone on? Like, are you getting that phone call or are you do you have silent mode on? Because I'm curious. All right. That. So, uh, I'll, I'll be 100% honest. Uh, I will say probably two years ago, it was always on, right? Like, no, yeah. not on silent mode at all. Uh, I do have it on, on the sleep mode now, you know, with the iPhone, sure, sure. Uh, because I have a baby now, but if, if you call me twice, I'm going to answer. I mean, it, it, you know, if you break through the, the, the do not disturb, I'm going to answer. And it's okay. just, again, that that's, that's just my, you know, and like I've told my guys before, you know, no, nobody calls you at 2 AM to, to give you good news, unfortunately. So, you know, I already wake sure. up with a sense of, okay, let's, let's problem solve right away. But yeah. no, I mean, I, I, I'm definitely not going to miss a, a two calls in a row. Like that's, you know, if, if you break, break through my do not disturb, you can ask my customers that, uh, you know, I'll answer without a doubt. There won't be a, hey, man, I missed you last night, so to speak. Yeah, sure. And from your approach from being really good at customer service and then getting referrals essentially for, for business, it's, it's more of like, a, I guess, a bigger picture approach where, you know, like it might be harder to it might take longer to, to get a customer, a new customer, because you're waiting maybe for a potential referral. But at the end of the day, if you look at the big picture, that's uh, the strategy is, is amazing because you're, uh, you know, you're not just trying to get someone to give you one shipment for, you know, ASAP via cold call. You're literally providing, you know, like a form of art with your, with your service and people appreciate that, respect that. And you get, you know, like eventually it's like a snowball effect where you get more and more coming. But in the beginning, yeah, it might yeah. be a little bit more difficult to set out. So if anyone's. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. No, 100 okay. percent. You get so you get the momentum, right? You get yeah. the momentum because, you know, that that's how that's how we kind of we started. And uh, it was like slowly developing into something bigger. Um, you know, we, we also have our trucking side, you know, our asset side. And, and it, you know, a lot of people, a lot of of the brokerages or a lot of businesses out there is first let's get the equipment let's get the people let's get this like the resources before we have the customers kind of deal like let's just burn all this cash so sure. we've been more of like a almost like a family like a family-owned business where it's like we're slowly growing but it's at a pace that you know we're able to as we grow we invest you know we get more trucks we get more trailers because now we have the business and then and then it continues to grow and like and like you said the whole continuous improvement the better you get you know the the, the more possibilities you have of okay or a customer wants a specialized service okay well let me learn that service as we go and and, and provide right, it to then. you exactly exactly um i saw that you posted uh i think yesterday on linkedin the warriors from universal logistics services the drivers so these are these are your assets uh for universal yeah. Um, and it seems like they had some pretty crazy Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana uh, looked pretty some, crazy out there. I, I know, I know the storm didn't hit as bad. It wasn't as bad as it as it could have been, as, as they were like uh, forecasting it to be. But the temperatures yeah. are just insane. Uh, They're insane, yeah. And uh, I mean, the, the biggest thing, you know, and 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 again, we've learned it. it. It wasn't one of those things like we we just came up with it. It's like okay, just make sure you communicate with the customer, right? Like. No customer is going to tell you risk risk your life to get my freight here. So as long as as long as you're letting the customer know, hey, look, check out these conditions. They'll yeah. understand for the most part. And I mean, luckily, luckily they've been able to understand it and say, okay, just hump over and 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 you yeah. know, tomorrow we'll reassess. But again, 
you know, what we tell our people is make sure you communicate. I mean, that that's the main thing. Sure. That's, that's, um, that's when people say, okay, you know, we totally get it. Communication <laughs> yeah. is key. That's, that's for sure. Especially in it's logistics. Key. Yeah. You know, um, it. you know it. Yeah. Totally. Uh, Carlos, like, let's say right now, like you, you, you knew everything that you know now, but you go back eight years uh, to the beginning of your time at Universal, like, um, I guess what were like some takeaways that you would like, maybe what would you have taken from that, from this time, eight years that you would have told Mm -hmm. yourself eight years ago when you were starting so that you could know, you know, like, like some wisdom that you've learned throughout uh, the years in logistics. I mean, I I would say just, just because like be more like be cooler, so to speak, you know, because I feel like in those early years, there's the stressful nights, there's, uh, you know, when 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 you gotta do it all yourself, so to speak, it can, it could be defeating, right? Like it can get to the point to it, like this is this is too much, yeah. uh, and like or when issues are happening, you you really stress yourself out to the point that it's like not really healthy. You know what I mean? So yeah, totally. Now, I experienced that a yeah, few times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and it's you know, and you're young, and you're like, man, I, you know, and, and again, you gotta pay your dues, in my opinion, right? Like when you're young, that is the time to 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 kind of become that person. Uh, so I would go back and tell myself, dude, just, just chill out. You know, like the, the, the biggest thing customers have told me in the past is like, luckily, you know, you're not dealing with human lives, so to speak, you know, like, you know, you're not going to lose somebody's life. So to, to, to be more calm in that arena, I will say 100%. Uh, I, I will tell myself that. And, uh, I think the second would probably be something in, in in the sense of you know the relationships keep keep a closer touch with 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 your customer as far as checking in on them more often. I know when you start getting busy and bombarded, you, you kind of start forgetting about certain customers you haven't dealt with in the past. Uh, and I, and I think that's key because you know people really appreciate that uh, for you to sure. check back in with them to even if they don't have anything for you, uh, to just be a friend, so to speak. Yeah, because I think it's. Relationship. Day, it's, it's it's a relationship, and I mean, and yeah. I know I've heard it. You've heard it a million times. People do business with people, not with companies. So, yeah. you totally. know, I want to, I want to talk, I want to talk to Paul. You know, I, I, it's not about, you know, yeah, your brand is, is awesome, but at the end of the day, it's you, right? So, sure, sure, yeah. No, it's true, and you, you know, like I, so I learned the fact that this is a relationship industry, like not too long ago, maybe like a decent amount of time ago. Like I learned that it was, this is relationships, and then like. I've been listening to these podcasts and it seems like almost every industry is relationship based. When you look at sales right. and there's really no industry where it doesn't boil down to relationships. And, you know, the fact that like the more, the more contacts or the more um, touch points you have with the customer, the better that relationship becomes. Uh, right. Therefore, yeah, like reaching out to people is so important. Uh, making sure just to like, see like what's going on. Like, you know, Hey, I'm in town. Can we grab, you know, some lunch or dinner or go out? It, there's right and and i've learned it just like from my part of the business of like running freight caviar because this is like like legitimately a business now where i have customers and i'm like i'm this is you know i have to, i'm i gotta be friends with these people not because like it's not even like that i had to be friends with them it's like i only want to do business with people i want to be friends with so it's like these are actually my friends exactly uh and like you know i've had there's been some companies that like have wanted to work with me and like I talk to like the CEO and stuff. And I'm like, I don't want to talk to this guy. This guy's, uh, yeah. or the, you know, they're just like, he seems like an asshole. Like, it's like, like, I don't care if he pays me or I'm not paying him. They just not, not deal with him. Therefore it's like, yeah, yeah like some people might not care, but I, I do get kind of picky with the people I work with. And I, it's tough to, you're hundred percent right, Carlos. It's, it's all relationships. And you have to, and, and, and again, uh, you know, I, I've, I've heard, uh, it was some lady that, that was like, um, uh, she gives like LinkedIn classes, so to speak, and she was at that conference. Sure. She was talking about how like, you know, like 99% of the people you're going to try to sell to are not ready to buy at that point, you know, mm-hmm. but tomorrow they'll, they'll be ready. So you got to yeah. stay in front of them somehow. Sure. And, and you know, and, and, and trying to be a friend. I mean, it's, it's just, it's just normal, right? You, you, you want to be good to people overall in, in general anyway. Sure. So to be honest, to be, to be yourself as opposed to, you know, like, I think, I think that's key. Right. Like, and, and, you know, I, I think I'm a likable guy. I, I don't know. 
Yeah. <laughs> you I think know, so too, you're bro. a likable <laughs> guy. Like, I, and, and, I, <laughs> and, and, uh, and yeah, it's, you know, like I like to joke around a lot. Like I'm, I'm, I'm one of those guys that like, like at the office, you know, I, I don't, uh, situations could get stressful, but I'm going to make a joke out of it. Sure. And, uh, and my customers can tell you that too. And, uh, and, and I think that, I think that's huge to keep, to keep up the, uh, the sense of humor because it can be a stressful, stressful environment and, and you know yeah. it out there. So uh, I think sense of humor is key as well. That's like, what I do with great caviar. I try to bring some uh, yeah, sense of humor. Dude, it's, it's awesome. I mean, <laughs> we, uh, you know, in the office, we, we throw around your memes on, on G chat all the time. So, uh, so, <laughs> so, 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 um, so, um, uh, are, are amazing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> some of them are too edgy. That may, may not, may, some of them may not make it to HR, uh, but uh... <laughs> dude, I had a meme. But, I, I had a meme like three weeks ago get banned, like deleted off of Instagram. I'm like, it was like the no Pinocchio way. one. Have you seen the Pinocchio? Oh, one? dude. Yeah, that one, that one. Instagram got that one removed for sexual content. I'm like, that's not sexual content. Like, it's not like it's not nudity oh, or anything gosh. like that. And I'm like, oh, right, it, was, right. it was weird. Uh, but yeah, so I, it, I've been like, yeah. I, I'm like, ah, I got to think twice before I share something now. And it's like, I don't really like that. But at the same time, like, I get it. Like, you know, it's like I'm dealing with, you know, social media providers that aren't mine. Uh, you know, it's like. Uh, right. They they have their own regulations. And, yeah. yeah. So. Exactly. No, but man, again, in this industry, it's it's kind of like uh, you, you, you kind of came at the right time you know, like with, with <laughs> social media and it was perfect. So now we would yeah. talk about it all the time with the guys and it, it, it provides great fun. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm here for. And I, I think that the industry definitely needs it because it is a fun, it's a fun industry, but people are always stressing out. Uh, and, you know, typically like a lot of people can't see the, like the funny side of things. And uh, there's a lot of funny things, that, things that happen in our industry. Whereas, you know, most people are stressing out by their desk and like, it's like, dude, like we're all gonna die. We're all gonna be in a graveyard all one day. It's like you can't take you can't take things so seriously, and you, you know, really can't. Yeah, you know, yeah. having some. And I mean, humor... and I feel like there, there's a lot of grumpy people. What would you say in this industry? Like, dude, for sure. Or, or is that I... or is that in general? Or is that in general? Like, is, no. is it that in every industry? I don't know, dude. It's actually kind of crazy. So, um, well. I, I knew these two. There's actually two women that were like two separate companies. It was funny. They were both um, like they kind of even looked alike. It was kind of weird. It was bizarre. But they were like perfectionist and like like honestly, when it comes to details, insane. Like it's like if you like they were both account managers, and if they if you did anything that wasn't like in the the load information, if you did if the load doesn't go well, anything like that, both of these girls would just fucking go insane and like literally like <laughs> like it was like dealing with them was like the most stressful thing in the world because like yeah. for the company they were the, they were great assets so i'm not gonna lie for both companies these were like these stars where it's like they made sure everything went the way it's supposed yeah. to the way the customer wanted it and you know so it's like it's 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 tough to say exactly because like at and from one point of view like for the company and for the customer, fantastic. I mean, fantastic, exactly. For me and my health, awful. And uh, <laughs> therefore, it's it's like, um, you know, it's I, I guess you need you need balance in life. I was talking to Matt O'Mara, the 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 CEO or the founder of Whimsy Intermodal. This is actually his company right here. Whimsy, uh, okay. he invited me it's a couple. Cool of so, yeah, it is a cool yeah. hat. He gave me like a few of them. This one's a, a super cool one. And he was telling me how it's important to have balance in life. And I think, I think he just needs some balance where you, sometimes it's, you have to be serious. You have to take sure, make sure everything goes smoothly. Right, right. And then at the same time, you have to make sure you could uh, relax a little bit and enjoy yourself and have fun because we're all going to die. It's easier said than done. Right. Uh, and, and, it depends and, for which person for me it's pretty easy nowadays <laughs> i'm right. pretty i'm just chilling right no but, but but correct yeah it, but correct it, it took you like for me like it took me a few years to to know okay mm. you know Dude, you know i used to it's, get so stressed out all the right, time right. thinking about every load i used to have dreams of moving freight and having problems oh, yeah. with freight it was literally i know exactly what you mean it was like now I'm, I'm back to my regular dreams where I dream about, I don't know, some crazy stuff, not, not freight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. And, yeah. and, 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 you know, what I tell my family also is like, or when, when things are slow, I feel like I'm more stressed than when things are like insane. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Right. So maybe I'm just totally. crazy at this point. And, and, you know, we're all a little bit crazy here in logistics. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm cool with, you know, uh, but, uh, 
But yeah, that, that's that, that's hilarious, man. I mean, yeah, those perfectionists are out there, and, and again, the grumpy people are out there, and you just kind of have to battle through it. And you know, sure. And if you can, if you can put a smile on their face, it's a win. I mean, and definitely. Yeah. I think I would say you were doing that on a daily totally. basis. So that's good. Yeah, a hundred percent. Well, Carlos, I appreciate you taking time to talk to us, talk to me uh, today, and free to have your podcast. Uh, but if anyone would be interested in reaching out to you, uh, what's like the best way to to reach out to, to you? I'll, I'll say LinkedIn for sure. Uh, we're, we're actually, you know, we're working on a new on a new website. It should launch uh, January anytime now. I mean, we're we're almost there. Uh, so it's gonna be ulsvnow.com. What is it again? Uh, and uh, ulsvnow.com. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So and and uh, you know if if. You, you'll be able to get in touch with us and yeah absolutely i mean i i appreciate you giving us the time and i know you know like i told you before many times you know super proud of what you're doing uh and you know to see your story that that's 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 awesome and i hope you keep on growing man i wish you all, Thanks, the, all the success in the world and you know don't forget about us little people when uh... <laughs> i appreciate that Carlos. are you are you gonna be attending yeah. uh any conferences uh in 2023 I'll, I'll have to check it out. Let me survive uh, 2022. And then maybe, yeah, so we the schedule, but, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we'll, we'll make sure. I mean, yeah, this is a, uh, this is going to be a good year. I feel it, you know, that uh, I'm super optimistic that we'll pick back up. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and yeah, I think it's key in order to, to continue to grow, to be going to those events, to, you know, meeting those people face to face and yeah, and networking from them. Networking is so important. It's, it's not exactly. what you know, it's who you know. So, it's who you know 100 yeah. so you so we can make them laugh right and so. exactly <laughs> thanks for tuning in to the daily freight caviar podcast if you enjoyed the podcast or if you didn't leave a review let me know what you think i appreciate any feedback if you'd like to have more freight caviar content go to freightcaviar.com and subscribe to my email newsletter